come on into my kitchen and let's do our Bible study. We're, we're building our house. That's the name of a book I wrote a few years back. And it comes from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. It's an interesting study. I realized one day that those are just like building a house. And so we've been doing that recently. Today we're going to put in our windows. And the name of the chapter is Windows Do Good for Evil, Let the Sun Shine In. Now Jesus gave some very unusual, um, what shall I call them, rules, suggestions, whatever it is. He said that if we do these things, it's like building a house on a rock. And when the rains come, that house will stand. So in Matthew 5, 38 through 48, I won't read all of that because we'll only study a part of it today. But Jesus said, You've heard that it hath been said, An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other one also. And if any man will, take, will sue thee at law, take away thy coat, let him have your cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him to our twain. So we're going to talk today about turning the other cheek, about give him your cloak also, and go the extra mile. Turning the other cheek. Jesus said if someone hits you on one, turn the other one. And it's not human nature to do that. It's not the natural thing. But then we are supposed to be supernatural people. When we're born again, we're born of the Spirit. And so we don't always do the natural thing, but we do the spiritual thing. And these are teachings that Jesus said would fulfill the old covenant or the old law. I always thought if, if someone hit my husband Malcolm that he would probably slug them right back and I was real surprised one Sunday afternoon as he was a pastor in Tampa he's been a pastor for 50 years uh, he's retired now but a man came to our door our carport door that entered to our kitchen and my husband invited him in and he said no he didn't want to come in but he wanted to wipe Malcolm up on the floor with, or wipe the floor up with Malcolm. And so Malcolm stepped outside to see what the problem was. And when he told Malcolm he wanted to wipe the floor with him, Malcolm said, well, brother, if it would make you feel better, go ahead and hit me. And when Malcolm said that, the man got very quiet, changed his whole attitude, and began to talk and explain to Malcolm his problem. Malcolm, he and Malcolm were able to solve that problem that day by talking. And because Malcolm had obeyed this scripture that says, if they want to smite you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. Malcolm had a, a friend when he was at Lee College. In fact, the man took him to Lee College. The, the friend's name was Thesel Martin. And Thesel had not been saved very long when he decided he needed to go to Lee College and, and go into training because God had called him into the ministry. Now, Thesel had a very interesting background. Thesel could not read or write. He had been in the service, the United States service, and when he got his check each month, he had to sign it with an X. He had had several things wrong with him. He had about seven diseases. Tuberculosis was one of them. And when he got saved, his wife thought that he had gone crazy, and she entered him into a mental hospital. And then one day, a, a preacher came by, and the, the preacher took him out and, and was going to take him to Old Robert's meeting to, for prayer, for all these different things that was wrong with him. That was back in the 50s, and if you know anything about the 50s, you know that Oral Roberts had a wonderful healing ministry under a huge tent at that time, and God used him mightily, and many people were healed. 
Well, on the way to Oral Roberts' meeting, uh, the, the minister stopped at another church to visit a friend of his who was the pastor there. And while they were visiting, Thistle went into the church and he thought to himself, now, God could heal me right here. I don't have to go on any place else to be healed. And so he began to pray and the other two ministers came in and prayed with him and he was healed that day. Now they went on to the Oral Roberts meeting and he gave his testimony how God had healed him of these seven different diseases. One thing he had was strapna around his heart where he had been shot during the war and he had had a Bible in his pocket and it had kept him from dying but it had still strapna had got in close to his heart and they said if he moved he could have been he, it would have killed him. After he was healed he went back to his hometown and he went in the drugstore and uh, one of his old buddies came in and Thiesel began to tell him about his conversion and about how God had healed him. Well it upset the guy. It made him really mad and he just hauled off and knocked Thiesel into the floor. And Thiesel knew this scripture. By then he had read this scripture that if somebody smites you on one cheek you're supposed to turn the other cheek. And he thought, if I turn the other cheek, this guy is just going to make mincemeat out of me. He's going to knock me down again. So he said, God, what am I supposed to do? And he said it was like the Spirit of God just came on him. He reached out, took the guy by the shirt, and picked him up and set him back down. And the guy was so surprised and so touched that he just turned and ran. So he didn't hit Cecil again, and Cecil did not hit him back, so he kept this suggestion of Jesus, or this commandment of Jesus, whatever you want to call it. Now the second section of this scripture says, Give him your cloak also. There was a law that people would take you to court and sue you for your clothes. and. Jesus said, if someone takes you to the law and sues you for your coat, give him your cloak also. So the coat evidently was the undergarment, and the cloak was the outer garment. And Jesus said, don't just give them what they take from you, but give them more. Now, as I said, that's not the natural thing. When we lived in Jacksonville, my car was stolen. I got up one morning, and the car was gone the car that I drove. My husband's car was still in the garage, but mine I had left out on the driveway, and it was gone. And I didn't feel like saying, hey, let me find who took my car and let me give them something else too. Maybe I'll give them the lawnmower out of the garage. I didn't feel like that, and I was not put to the test to do that because I never really knew who stole it. It was found in another state, and it was returned to me. There was a movie, and I'm not at, I'm not sure if I pronounced the name of it right, Le, Les Miserables, but it's a beautiful account of a man who was in prison for stealing. And when he was released, he stole because he was hungry in the beginning. But when he was released, he went to a priest's home, and the priest invited him in and fed him supper and gave him a place to, speak, to spend the night. Well, while the priest and his wife, or the minister and his wife were asleep, the man that was at, right out of prison stole their silverware and took off down the road. The authorities caught him, found the silverware on him, knew that it belonged to the priest, and carried the man back to the priest's home. When the priest saw it, he fulfilled this scripture that Jesus said if they take one thing, give them something else. And he didn't want the man to go back to prison. And so he said, no, he said, it's okay, I gave him the silverware. And he said, but, but he forgot to take the candlesticks, the silver candlesticks. And so he gave the silver candlesticks also to the man who had been in trouble. The man left with all the silver. 
and it changed his life. The love that the priest had and his obeying this scripture caused that man to think. And he, he felt such love coming from this godly man, this godly priest, that it totally changed his life. And he spent the rest of his life doing good for other people and trying to pay back the priest for what he had done for him. I love that story. I love the movie. I didn't see it in a movie theater, but I did see it on a DVD. And it's a beautiful story that fulfills this scripture that if someone takes your coat, give them your cloak. The next section says, go the extra mile. And in the day that this was written, Roman soldiers could demand that a person take their gear and carry it for them for one mile. And Jesus said if they do that, if a Roman soldier asks you to take their gear for one mile, he said, take it too. Go the extra mile. You've probably heard that little saying, go the extra mile. That's where it came from. It came from Jesus and his sermon on the mount. It's a good policy to live by. I've read quite a bit about being an, emplo an e employee and what you can do to reach the top of the ladder. And one of the things is to go the second mile. Do more than is required on your job. If you do a little bit more, you do a little extra, people notice and they appreciate it. And it will help you to further yourself in the climb on that ladder of success. Now, none of these things will take us to heaven. That's clear in the Word of God, that it's only through the blood of Jesus and being born again that we go to heaven when we die. But these are things that God will judge us on and reward us for when we do reach heaven. So today, if, if you've not been born again, I'd like for you to do that today. I'd like for you to make that step. It's a simple step, and all you do is just realize that you're a sinner. It's as easy as A, B, C. Acknowledge that you're a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. B is believe. The Bible says if you will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and confess Him, which is C, confess Him with your mouth, you shall be saved. So C is confess. Confess your sins. Confess Jesus as your Savior. I'd like for you to pray that now. If you've never prayed it, just say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me. I confess them now. And I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart I want to be born again, and I want to live for you, Jesus. From this day forward, I belong to you. Help me to build this house, and help me to put in the windows of this house that I can open them wide and let the sunshine of doing good for evil shine in my life. Thank you now for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you did that and, and you believed in your heart, then you are born again. Now you can start to do these things that Jesus is teaching us that will reap rewards when we get to the end of our journey. We're all going to die someday and we're all going to face God. And when we get there, we want to know that His blood has been applied to our hearts that we're right with Him, and that we have been doing the things that His Sermon on the Mount teaches. Uh, it's all in this little book, Building Your House. So meet me again next Tuesday for Turnaround Tuesday, and we'll study some more of the unusual things that Jesus said that we will do once we're born again, and we will reap rewards for it. God bless you. See you. Bye-bye.